What have the life lessons from the 12 disciples taught us? What do you know about personally being a disciple of Jesus Christ, a zealous follower of Jesus? St. Peter concludes our biblical study of the 12 apostles. He will show us what all of the other disciples were teaching us. Discipleship means putting your faith in Jesus and following him because of your love for God and showing that love to others. Two bookends are on either end of St. Peter's interaction with Jesus. Jesus begins his earthly relationship with Peter with these two words, follow me. Then ends his earthly conversation with Peter with the same words, follow me. In John chapter 21, we have the account of Jesus' last individual conversation with Peter. In John 21, verses 15 through 19, it says this. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. So much could be learned from St. Peter. We have so much information about him and his interaction with Jesus. Time does not permit us to look at all of the life lessons about being a disciple of Jesus that we could learn from the life of St. Peter. But these last words of Jesus to Simon Peter give the overarching message of discipleship that we all must learn. Discipleship, following Jesus, is all about love. Love that Jesus gives to us and the love we give to him. There is much to emulate Peter in our own lives, but as fantastic as Peter is, Peter was not without his faults. So maybe the best place to start for us beginner disciples is to learn this lesson. No sin is too great for the Lord's mercy. Denying the Lord is a grave sin. Jesus, in a discourse directed to the apostles, warns them of the consequences of such a denial. He says, But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father, he says in Mark chapter 10. At the Last Supper, the night Judas Iscariot would betray Jesus, Jesus directly foretells Peter's denial right to Peter's face. In spite of these warnings, Peter does indeed succumb to his own weakness and vehemently denies that he knows Jesus three times. Luke's gospel relates to us that immediately after his denials, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. I can only imagine that look of love and mercy, of sheer compassion that Jesus gave to Peter in that moment. A look which expressed his desire to forgive Peter and his knowledge of the great potential inside Peter in spite of his outward failings. No sin is above the mercy of the Lord. When we sin, we have only to seek that look of love from Jesus. Notice that Jesus asked if Peter loves him once for every time Peter denied knowing him. When Peter responds that he does love the Lord, Jesus encourages him to take care of his sheep. In a tender and heartfelt way, Jesus is telling Peter that his failure hasn't disqualified him from his role as Christ's trusted ally. The same is true for us. We all have moments of spectacular failure, but that doesn't mean that there's no way back. Jesus is continually at work in our lives, redeeming and restoring us. Our sin would disqualify us from God's service, but Christ's forgiveness restores us into a right relationship with God. Let me drive home this point. Too often we know we are forgiven for our terrible sins, but we think of our sins more than Christ and more than the forgiveness of the sins that he has given. We think we are second-class citizens in the church. We know we're right with God, but we're embarrassed to go out in public and boldly live for Christ. 
Here's a lesson from an Old Testament disciple of God. David, who was the second king of Israel, David was a tremendous follower of the one true God, but David sinned terribly. He failed to lead the army into battle. He committed adultery and got his neighbor's wife pregnant. He tried to deceive the husband, but then finally had him murdered. Later, God sent a prophet to confront David about his sin. David repented and God restored him. In Psalm 51, David writes his confession. This is what it says in verses 10 through 13. David writes, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. David asks and receives a right spirit, entry again into God's presence, the Holy Spirit in his life, and joyous salvation. These are the blessings and benefits David receives from God who forgave him. It would have been easy for David to fade away and sheepishly stay in the background, again feeling like a second-class citizen in God's kingdom. But faith in God's goodness and forgiveness is transformational. David then boldly re-enters into God's service, but with a humble limitation. David will be a teacher of God's word and proclaim God's promises. The caveat is that he will only teach sinners and transgressors of God's law, people like himself. Peter is forgiven by Jesus for his threefold denials. Then Jesus completely restores him to work in God's kingdom. Jesus invites Peter to feed my sheep, Jesus said. Both David and Peter had fallen short of the glory of God by their sin, but both were restored and forgiven. Both then boldly served God. Personally, these two men are of great comfort to me as a pastor. I have my own sin that I publicly confess with the church. I know I'm forgiven, but I often feel disqualified for the task of preaching and teaching God's word. I definitely feel like a second-class citizen and inadequate to the task, yet I am glad to join David and only share God's word with people who are like me, sinners. Because the message of the good news of salvation through faith in Christ Jesus isn't about the messenger, but it's about Jesus. And if you're not talking about Jesus, you're off the subject. It isn't about David or Peter or me. It's all about God's grand vision, His supreme passion to be with us. The sad news is that humanity chooses not to be with God. But we, you and me, and all sinners, get to tell the world about God's relentless pursuit to bring back humanity into fellowship with Himself through Jesus Christ. And that grand vision, that supreme passion and relentless pursuit is motivated by God's love for us. We know God is love. We know God demonstrated that love by sending Jesus to be our Savior. We know that nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus. Our response to that love is loving God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then Jesus invites us to join Him in His pursuit, His relentless pursuit, to bring back humanity into fellowship with Himself. So He says to Peter, Feed my sheep. Jesus is saying to Peter, love those who I was willing to die for, just like I was willing to die for you. Love them as you love yourself. Protect them like a good shepherd protects his sheep. Provide for them and prepare them for eternal fellowship with God. Discipleship is all about love. God's love for us in Christ Jesus, then our response of love back toward God and love for fellow sinners like you and me. Jesus it's all about love. And discipleship, it's all about love. So let's follow him and love him and love others.